criteria for deciding whether a point is maximum or minimum, how do you qualify a point to be maximum or minimum. The problem at hand was minimizing a function, a scalar function from m dimensions to one dimension r m to r and we wanted to qualify which point in the state space qualifies to be an optimum point. So, we said the point at which the first derivative the gradient goes to 0 that point is a stationary point to be very precise it could be a maximum it could be a minimum it could be a saddle point we do not know ok. So, to come up with you know qualification further qualification we have to look at the second derivative the Hessian matrix and if Hessian matrix is positive definite or positive semi definite it gives us way to qualify the point to be a minimum or a maximum. So, it should be strictly positive definite if it is to be a if it is to be a minimum it should be strictly negative definite if it is to be a maximum ok. So, let me just summarize what we looked at. So, this was uh, so we are looking at necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality we have this function phi x from r m to r and we said that this phi function is twice differentiable ok at any point right now right now this x belongs to r m m dimensional space ok and then we said that if a point x equal to x bar if this point x equal to x bar uh, we want to see whether this is a, a stationary point then then gradient of phi with respect to x at at x equal to x bar. So, this is nothing but dou phi by dou x 1 dou phi by dou x 2 this gradient vector should be equal to 0 and the way this necessary condition was proved why by considering the fact that if you take it non zero it contradicts the fact that x bar is a local minimum well we are talking only about local minimum this is a condition to be satisfied at a local minimum because all the arguments regarding a point to be local minimum or a local maximum that is a stationary point were made using Taylor series expansion. Taylor series expansion holds only locally it does not hold everywhere globally. So, these conditions necessary condition is a local condition just remember that. So, first thing is given an given a uh, objective function first thing is to compute its gradient and set it equal to 0 that will uh, that will give you uh, if if you can find such a point then that qualifies to be a stationary point a stationary point where you have gradient equal to 0. We further qualify so this x bar is a stationary point it is a stationary point and whether this stationary point further qualifies to be a optimum that is maximum or a minimum that will depend upon this matrix. So, uh, by the way this 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 derivative is computed at x equal to x bar this computed at x equal to x bar ok. Now, uh, phi of x phi of x bar plus delta x Uh, we wrote this as you know phi of x bar plus 
grad x phi at x bar transpose delta x plus half if we approximate this locally using Taylor series it is delta x transpose del square phi and now we have said that this is a stationary point so this is 0 so this is 0 right and then then locally we want to look at this difference which is governed by locally in a small neighborhood of x bar this difference is governed by this delta x transpose this term governs the local behavior in the neighborhood of x bar okay now if x bar is a minimum what should happen if i move away from the minimum what should happen value should increase so this difference should always be positive any direction i try to move away from x bar if x bar is a minimum any direction i try to move away from x bar i should have this difference to be positive that will be possible only when this matrix is positive definite if this matrix is positive definite what is definition of positive definiteness x transpose a x is always greater than 0 for any non zero x any way any any direction I try to move okay this will always be positive that is positive definite matrix if this is always positive irrespective of whichever direction I try to move away from x bar then x bar is a minimum okay just whatever you can visualize in two dimensions or three dimensions same thing holds in n dimensions if you try to move away from that point just think of being in a valley any which way if this is the lowest point in the valley any which way you try to move you will only increase height you will not go further below okay if you are at a minimum then that is the logic simple logic okay how do you mathematically express this using positive definite matrices okay mathematical quantification of simple fact that you know that when you are in a valley at the lowest point in the valley any any direction you try to move okay height will increase it cannot further decrease same thing same thing is being said here just remember that simple thing and correlate with this mathematical analysis then then you will understand it better now other way around now if if x bar is a maximum you are at a peak what should happen any way which you move now height will decrease any way which you move so what should happen is if i move make any movement delta x from x bar this difference should be negative okay when will that happen for any delta x that is very important for any delta x that will happen if this is negative definite if this hessian matrix is negative definite i am sure that any which way i move okay this is this is going to be negative so that means x bar is a local peak of course this local condition should also be satisfied at the global condition however this analysis does not tell us how to reach the global conditions it just tells us given a point if the derivative is 0 how do we qualify it minimum or a maximum locally okay now this condition can be checked for an objective function which is twice differentiable differentiable of course you cannot check it if your objective function is not differentiable or twice differentiable so that is very very critical so this is how what if what if your matrix is neither positive definite nor negative definite then then the point is neither a minimum nor a maximum you know in terms of a hill it could be you know something like this like a step where gradient with respect is becoming zero 
or a saddle point in what you know as saddle point. So, a multidimensional extension of a saddle point. You know, let us say you have a valley, but uh, a valley which is something like this. Well, it is difficult to draw, I am not good at. Let us say there is no one unique point, there is no one unique point where you have, uh, you know, you have you have multiple multiple points where the gradient goes to 0. So, you may have minimum with respect to one variable not a minimum with respect to other variable. So, you may have a saddle condition where there is not a unique point where. So, a saddle point is qualified by looking at property of this matrix local matrix. The nice thing is that definiteness of this particular matrix will allow us to find out whether particular matrix is uh, particular point is uh, you know maximum minimum or a saddle point ok. Now, let us come back to our problem of fitting C p versus temperature ok. I am going to generalize this set of equations and then going to solve it. So, now let me rewrite this problem which we had at hand we had this C p values C p 1 C p 2 C p n I had this n values correct I had n values I had collected this C p values at different temperatures at T 1, T 2, T 3, T n large number of right. I am just rewriting those equations in a matrix form earlier I had just put them one below each other as single equations I am now just rewriting them as one matrix equation that will help me solve the problem very easily. So, now this is 1 T 1 T 1 square 1 T 2 T 2 square just have a look at those earlier equations I am just revisiting them writing them in a different form. Everyone with me on this? Same equations. How many unknowns? n plus 3 and number of equations right now we have are only 3. Okay. So, first thing that we need to do is to define an objective function. That objective function should be twice differentiable, right? That objective function should be twice differentiable and then we should uh, we should you know minimize that and see whether the minimum is a, a positive definite matrix or negative definite matrix then we will be able to qualify whether we have reached a minimum or not ok. So, now I am going to call this as x I am going to call this as x I am going to call this vector as capital E x is a vector which is 3 dimensional in this case in general x will be a vector which is m dimensional. Suppose you have cubic equation which you are fitting there will be 4 ok and so on. So, if you fit a higher order equation you will get a uh, higher order polynomial and I am going to call this matrix as matrix A let me be let me see whether I am consistent with the notation ah slight change in the notation. I am going to call this as theta. I am ca calling it theta because theta is typically if you see literature on uh, parameter estimation a parameter vector is called theta ok that is why I am calling it theta no nothing uh, particular about this. Also in the notes I have developed everything with notation as theta. So, when you read the notes it will be easier for you to follow ok. So, this particular vector, this particular vector I am going to call as capital U, this particular vector I am going to call as capital U, this is A, this is theta, this is E. My large number of linear equations which are these linear equations, why? But there is T 1 square T 2 square 
they are known. I have taken measurements of temperature T1, T2, T3, Tn are known. I can compute this. So, these will be just columns of a matrix with some numbers. So, this is a linear matrix equation. Okay. So, my equation reduces to u is equal to u is equal to a theta plus e. e is the vector of errors. e is a vector of errors. Okay. Now, I need to define an objective function. I need to define an objective function and then this objective function should be differentiable. I should take its first derivative and set it equal to 0. Take its derivative with respect to a, b, c. Okay. Now, I am just moving from this specific problem to a general problem where theta in general could be m dimensional. Okay. Uh, this a will be n cross m matrix. See here m is 3. So, this is n cross 3 matrix. It is a tall matrix. No? So, this n could be 100 and you have only 3 parameters to be estimated. Okay. Okay, so I am going to define, I am going to define a phi of theta which is E transpose E which is nothing but E1 square plus E2 square En square, sum of the square of errors. What are these? What is E1 to En? Errors in modeling. We are mo developing a correlation model of CP versus temperature. Okay. It is not exact fit. It is an approximate correlation. This E1 to En are errors. Okay. I want to develop a model that minimizes sum of the square of errors. Simple, simple idea, which probably you have heard or done in your undergraduate studies for single parameter probably. We fit a line. We very, very usually fit a line. I do not know whether we do uh, in undergraduate, we are taught to find out the best or least square fit, but we fit a line by many times in experiments, we fit a line by, you know, just observing what is the trend visually. Okay, we do not try to do all this uh, business, but then if you ask Excel or MATLAB, they will do this for you and give you. Okay, so now, so what is this? This is equal to u minus a theta transpose u minus a theta, right? What is e? u minus a theta, u minus a theta. Okay. Now, when do I get? When do I? How do I find the optimum? This is a scalar function. Is this a scalar function? Why? This is a simply. This is simply norm e to e2 square, right? Sum of the square of elements. Norm norm e2 square. Norm is a scalar function. In fact, it's a positive scalar function. It will always be positive. Uh, well, an objective function need not always be positive, but in this case, it turns out to be strictly positive. The smallest value e transpose e can take is 0. That means all the errors are 0. Okay. Well, that, whether that is possible for this particular problem or not a different story, but a smallest value it can take is 0 in this case. Okay. So, what I want to find out is I want to find out dou phi by dou theta that should be equal to. So, this should be dou, dou phi by dou theta 1 to dou phi by dou theta m, this should be equal to 0 vector. Okay. Now, I need to know something about how do I differentiate. So, this is a this is a function of a vector which maps into a scalar. How do I differentiate this? How do I differentiate with respect to a vector? We know how to differentiate with respect to a scalar value, right? So, how do I differentiate with respect to vector? Uh, I am just going to state the rules. Uh, you can derive them. They are not so difficult to derive. We need to be a little bit patient and then do uh, your algebra correctly. So, in terms of notation, I am just digressing a little bit because I want to differentiate this E transpose E with respect to theta, set that equal to 0. Okay. I will get m additional equations. 
see these are already n equations I need m more equations m here happens to be 3 I need m more equations those equations will be obtained when I when I do this but before that I should know how to differentiate a, a function which is a, a scalar function which is function of a vector so so let us say I have this function f which is x transpose b y I have a function x which is x transpose b y b is a matrix x and y are vectors I just want to differentiate f now f is a scalar function you can see that f is a scalar function okay uh, how do I differentiate so do by do x of do f by do x do f by do x differentiating this scalar function with respect to the first argument x okay that is b y do f by do y is equal to b transpose x okay and a straightforward corollary of this is that uh, do by do x of x transpose b x is equal to 2 b x if b is symmetric if b is symmetric matrix then then it looks b is symmetric matrix okay then it is well if it is not a symmetric matrix then what will it be b plus b transpose b plus b transpose if it is not a symmetric matrix it will be b x plus b transpose x okay so we can we can use this rules to differentiate this function with respect to theta and come up with a solution so uh, how do i do that so can you differentiate can you tell me what is the solution just differentiate just use these rules can you expand this say this will be phi is equal to u transpose u minus u transpose a theta minus theta transpose a transpose theta transpose a transpose u plus theta transpose a transpose a theta I have just expanded this I have just expanded four terms u is a vector u is a vector a theta is a vector right and then I am just expanding this the simple matrix multiplication okay now what is u u is a vector of known values it's a constant vector so what is dou phi by dou theta this part will be 0 what about this guy apply the rules correctly will be a transpose u a transpose u so if i if i if i differentiate this dou phi by dou theta i'll get minus 2 a transpose u plus 2 times a transpose a theta i don't know whether you all agree with me why why i am writing two times here this a transpose a is a special matrix what kind of matrix it is but me no why one by one it will be m cross m no in this case it will be a three cross three matrix can i say that a transpose a is always a symmetric matrix 
you take you take transpose of a transpose a you will get back a transpose a okay positive definite matrix matrix naturally appears here we don't have to make any effort okay it just plops out from the equations so this is a positive definite matrix in fact this will be, turn out to be positive definite matrix this is a symmetric matrix this is a symmetric matrix we'll go on to show that this is positive definite also um, so this particular matrix is a symmetric matrix so i can write to a transpose a okay that is because that is because a transpose a just check this a transpose a transpose is equal to a transpose a so whatever is this matrix just remember that this particular matrix whatever is this matrix you know how so at all it is 1000 1000 equations and three variables and it might be filled with all kinds of strange numbers this matrix that is a transpose a will always be symmetric matrix It'll always be symmetric matrix in fact we will show that if these columns are linearly independent then that particular matrix will be positive definite matrix okay it will be a positive definite matrix so so now the task is done if this is zero if i set this equal to zero what do i get i set this equal to zero then what is the theta how do you compute theta what is this matrix what is size of this matrix it is m by m okay so if m is 3 this will be 3 cross 3 okay so this particular matrix so so setting gradient equal to 0 gives us this equation uh, a transpose a times theta is equal to a transpose u okay so this is m cross m what is dimension of this matrix a transpose is so this is m cross n into n cross 1 so this is m cross 1 so finally you are getting an equation which is 3 cross 3 matrix and how many equations you wanted n m equations or you wanted three equations in this particular case we wanted three equations we have those three equations now this is m equations okay in uh how many unknowns m unknowns this is m cross 1 this is m cross 1 m unknowns i solve this problem now if columns of a are linearly independent just think about what i am saying i am not going to prove it if columns of a are linearly independent then this matrix is invertible not only that not only that this matrix will always be positive definite okay uh before we proceed further and i show that why it is positive definite what is the second derivative of this a transpose a right so the second derivative do 2 phi by do theta square is equal to 2 times a transpose a right so now depending upon whether this matrix is positive definite okay if this turns out to be positive definite matrix then we are done then we we have reached the minimum okay in fact this is the linear equation you can show that this minimum is not just local this is the global minimum for linear linear set of equations we reach the global minimum okay now my task is to show so that a transpose a is a positive definite symmetric matrix is very straight forward positive definite matrix okay now let us assume that uh a has columns are linearly independent
columns of A are linearly independent. Okay, what does it mean? When will you get A x equal to 0? When will you get this? If columns are linearly independent, which vector x will give you 0 vector? Only 0 vector. If columns are linearly independent, this will be this will be 0 is same as saying x is equal to 0. You cannot get if a columns are linearly independent, only way you can get a x equal to 0 is x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, how do you check what is the definition of positive definiteness? Positive definiteness is that x transpose a transpose a x should be greater than 0 if x is not equal to 0, right? Okay, I am just going to write this, I am going to write this as, I am going to write this as a x transpose a x, am I correct? I am just clubbing x and a, x and a, a x transpose a x, okay. So, what is a x transpose a x? norm a x to square, when will this be 0? If, see there are two situations, if a is a singular, if a has columns which are linearly dependent, there might be an x which will give you 0, but we have said that columns of a are linearly independent. So, if you have an x which is non-zero, this, this vector is going to be non-zero and this is square of the norm, square of the norm is always a positive number. So, whatever whatever x value, whatever x vector you give me, A transpose A is going to be a symmetric positive definite, very nice matrix, okay. Matrix which we keep studying in linear algebra, here it just pops out naturally as part of the development. So, uh, A transpose A is a symmetric positive definite matrix. I am showing here that for any x, you know, uh, you will always get a positive number if x is not equal to 0. So, this will be greater than 0 if x is not equal to 0. So, this satisfies the definition of positive definiteness, okay. I do not, there are algebraic conditions like eigenvalue should be positive and all that, that let us not worry about it right now, we will we'll visit that little later. But uh, here using the basic definition of positive definiteness, I am showing that this A transpose A is always positive, okay which means not only that I have reached a stationary point, I have reached the minimum. It is a linear model, there is only one minimum, I have reached the minimum, okay. If I have to do all this using one norm of E or infinite norm of E is not possible because one norm of E is not differentiable, I cannot use this nice theory, okay. Infinite norm is not differentiable, I cannot use all this nice theory. So, there are problems if I use some other norms, two norms, very, very nice. You know, you can differentiate and get this result. Now, I am going to relate all this to projections. I will show that this is nothing but projecting a vector onto a subspace. Geometric interpretation, what, what is happening here? That is what I am going to do next. So, why we are able to relate it to projections? Because, as I said, in a inner product space, in a Hilbert space, you know, with an inner product norm gets free, you get a free norm, two norm and you get angle, you can talk about orthogonality, you can talk about projections, you can just, just, you know, generalize the ideas which you know from three dimension school geometry, okay. So, this is a symmetric positive definite matrix, we have reached the global minimum, this is the solution. Any such problem I can solve using, now, do I have to stick to polynomials? I really do not have to, okay. I can talk about any function approximation. So, I am going to take a scenario. Here, I looked at Cp as a function of temperature. That was one specific example, okay. I do not have to stick to only polynomials. I could, I could, any function which is linear in parameters, I could, I could actually estimate the parameters by this approach. Let us say I am approximating a function, say u which is, I have this function uh, u z and I know its values at z1, z2, z n and these values are say u1, 
u2 un this is my data set i don't want to fit a polynomial i just let's say i want to fit sin and cos you are perfectly allowed to do that okay so i want to fit a function which is uh, i want to fit a function say fz which is which is uh, or let's call this function by some other uh, notation okay so i want to fit a function say u cap z okay which is theta 1 uh well this need not be function of only one variable right it could be function of multiple variables uh in this case okay let's take first situation when you have function of only one variable say z1 plus theta 2 f2 z2 so i am fitting this i am fitting this function approximation of course there will be an error here there will be an error here so u cap u cap is my approximation u cap is my approximation theta 1 into f1 z theta 2 into f2 z and so on okay polynomial was one type of approximation i had chosen this to be 1 i had chosen this to be z i had chosen the second to be z square z cube and so on that is one particular type of approximation. I could have chosen first one to be sin, sin z, second to be cos z, third to be 2 sin z, third, fourth to be 2 cos z and so on, cos 2 z sorry, cos 2 z, sin 2 z and I could have chosen some other functions. I could have chosen Legendre polynomials, I could have chosen shifted Legendre polynomials, it is up to me what, what should I choose. Uh, I could have chosen all kinds of different uh, uh, functions here. I can apply the same theory which is very nice because I know this, I know this, uh, I know these functions, I have chosen these functions, okay. I can evaluate them at a particular point, okay. So let us, let us take a scenario where you want to approximate this, let us take instead of being abstract, let me put it uh, in a concrete form. So theta 1 say f1 is my sin z plus theta 2 cos z plus theta 3 sin 2 z plus theta 4 cos 2 z plus error. Let us say this is my, this is my, this is my approximation function, okay. What do I do? I do the same thing which I did earlier. I just write u1, u2, these are the values which I know at n different points, these are the values that I know at n different points. I can say first one is sin z1 cos z1 sin 2 z1 cos 2 z1 then second row is sin z2. And finally, sin z n cos. So, I write this huge matrix. How many parameters? Four parameters. Four parameters. So, this is theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, plus I have this e1 to e n. same equation okay so this f here could be any complex function mind you this particular model is linear in parameter okay we have formally defined what is a linear function some time back so you should just check when you call a function to be a linear function f of alpha x plus beta y, beta y will be alpha times f of x plus beta times f of y that will that will exactly hold here so this is a linear in parameter function any linear in parameter model you can do this okay you can actually 
so so what is what what do i get here this is my this is my u vector okay this is my a matrix this is my a matrix this is my theta and this is my e how do i get least square estimate of theta a transpose a so least square estimate of theta is simply theta hat least square that's what we write theta hat y hat it is an estimate of theta there are different ways of getting theta if you were to define one norm instead of two norms we will get a different theta so i am calling this as th theta which is obtained through least square of errors okay that's why theta hat least squares is nothing but a transpose a now we have shown that this is a positive definite symmetric matrix a positive definite matrix means no eigen value zero it must be invertible so i can write inverse a transpose u a transpose u in fact this matrix is called as zero inverse of a why zero inverse a is a non square matrix a is a non square matrix okay a is n cross m i cannot invert it by the normal sense of n cross n square matrix this matrix why why it is zero inverse what happens if you multiply post multiply it by a when you call something to be inverse you multiply the matrix and matrix inverse you should get identity matrix take this matrix post multiply it not pre multiply post multiply it by a what will happen identity matrix so that's why this a transpose a inverse a transpose is called as zero inverse of a matrix in matlab there is a function called p inv zero inverse inv can be used for square matrices p inv can be used for non square matrices you just say p inv doing this in matlab is just Two minutes. Formulate a matrix say p i n v a times u. You get the theta, the square theta. Okay, fraction of a second. You can do this. You should know the theory behind this. That's very, that's very important. Okay, so is this clear? I don't have to have polynomials. I can have any complex function. Okay, I'll give you an example from chemical engineering. Uh, and sometimes you do not have to begin with. To begin with, you may not have a linear equation, but you might be able to. come to a linear in parameter equation once you do a transformation say I'll, i'll give you an example i want to fit data i am carrying out some reaction and i want to estimate the kinetics of the reaction okay so i have this ra is equal to or minus ra is equal to k ca to power n okay or let's put it k not e by rt right now maybe i should write in the order should be k not e to the power e by rt into c a to power n this is my model okay actually i should write this model with an error here we don't write it because this may not be exact model we are proposing this model so an approximate model so we should strictly speaking should write an error uh, error here say epsilon because don't confuse with e here e here is exponential uh, so this is my model and i want to get least square estimates what are the unknown parameters k not e r is known okay and n what is the data that you have C A and T, C A and T, okay, is the data that you have. I could do a log transformation of this model, okay. I can say log of minus R A is equal to log K naught minus E E by R T plus n log C A, right? n log c a 
okay now i can write this as log k not plus or other minus e by r into 1 by t plus n log n log c a i have collected data for concentration and at different concentrations and different temperature i have data for rate rate expression i want to get a least square estimate okay is this a linear in parameter model what are the parameters log k not log k not e by r or e whatever e if you want to take r on this side you can do that since you know r so e is unknown parameter and n okay so here in this matrix in this matrix what you will get in this matrix what i'll get is 1 1 here then uh minus 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 minus 1 by tn this column this column is coming because of this variable 1 by t okay the third column what will be the third column log ca1 log ca2 actually log i should write ln natural log log k not e by r and n and what should be here what should be here r1 minus log r1 minus log the not minus log log of minus rn that minus is a notation so it should be uh, log minus r1 log minus r2 you know all this reaction rates this remember minus is a notation so it's not so we are not taking log of a negative number so uh this is this is the equation that you get this is the u vector which you know this is the u vector because you know the rates at different temperature and concentration okay you have estimates of the rates this matrix is known to you a matrix temperatures are known to you concentrations are known to you so this is known matrix this is known matrix this is my theta which i want to estimate okay what is the least square solution a transpose a inverse a transpose u this remember this formula very very important a transpose a inverse a transpose this is called as pseudo inverse of a a transpose a inverse a transpose a transpose a is always a square matrix and if columns of a are linearly independent it's always invertible matrix and then and what you get here from the least square sense is the minimum okay there cannot be any other value of theta which will give you smaller sum of the square of errors for a linear in parameter model you cannot get you cannot get a model which will give you smaller value than this optimum value which you get okay so this is my least square problem this least square problem is used in many many ways uh in the assignment i'll give you other problems from chemical engineering where you can you do least square fitting to estimate the parameters sometimes what happens is that sometimes a model is not transformable to a linear it cannot be linearized i will call this as a linearization step in the linearization step you can do some transformation and convert originally the model is not in not a linear in parameter e and n and k not they are multiplying and they don't appear you know the fundamental definition 
will not satisfy here that is f of alpha x plus beta y is same as alpha f of x plus beta f of that will not be satisfied for this function but it will be satisfied this transform function. Now this is not possible always to get this I will tell you one, one more model in chemical engineering where you can do this transformation okay and estimate the parameters this is how it is done. Uh, one more classic model in chemical engineering is correct me if I am wrong Nusselt number is equal to alpha 1 into Reynolds number raised to alpha 2 and Prandtl number raised to alpha 3 right Nusselt number is equal to then how do I this is not a linear in parameter model what are the known quantities here I would have I would have data for Nusselt number Reynolds number for different flows I have collected data for you know Prandtl number Nusselt number and uh, I want to fit, I want to fit and I want to estimate alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 okay. This is not a linear in parameter model but simple log transformation. So if I take log of n u it will be log alpha 1 plus alpha 2 log Reynolds number plus alpha 3 log parental number. This transform model is linear in parameter. Okay, I could use least square estimation technique to estimate uh, log alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. If I get log alpha 1, I can get alpha 1, not an issue, right. So this is, this is simple transformation. What is mass transfer correlation? Schmidt number is equal to or Sherwood number, sorry. Sherwood number is equal to, yeah, so sh is equal to some beta 1 plus Reynolds number raised to alpha 1 or beta, beta 2 plus what Schmidt number well for me it is almost 20 years now so you are fresh. So right this is this is some 0.63 and you also you may have viscosity correction mu by mu s raised to something fourth parameter. So you may have four parameters, but once you do this transformation, it is a linear in parameter model. You can use the square parameter estimation. These columns will be different. This column will be different. Same idea works. You get least square estimates of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4 just by taking A transpose A inverse. So polynomial fitting is not the only thing. I am just now polynomial fitting we started with because we wanted to do something with uh, discretizing a boundary value problem or partial differential equation. But least square estimation goes much, much, much beyond. All this was well discovered by uh, Gauss, the famous mathematician uh, well in, in, in the realm of mathematics or in the realm of history of mathematics. Gauss is called as prince of mathematics and the work he did actually is now major fields, okay, least square estimation. Uh, Gaussian densities, Gaussian quadrature in so there's so many things, so many things. I mean, I don't know what we would be doing if Gauss had not discovered. Gauss was a child prodigy. He discovered many things at a very very early age, and the things that he started. Actually, he started looking at least square estimation because he wanted to fit. I think he was looking at the problem of um, fitting a uh, orbit into the data for obtained from uh, motion of planets around the sun that was the problem that was being discussed at that time. So what is the best fit? It does not happen to be a circle actually it is a it is an ellipse and uh, you have to fit because if you uh, if you look at a data the data has some errors and then you have to do a best fit to uh, get the get the model correct model. So what is started about 150 or 200 years back is now just spans I mean it is it is all these tools are used in image reconstruction they are used in soft sensing they are used in just name it least square estimation forms the foundation okay or uh, work by Gauss forms the foundation. So we are here today because of this prince of mathematics Gauss.